Of course, playing FIFA and being good at the game is what's going to get you those wins, but a part of that is how you're set up within game settings and camera settings to give you the best chance to dominate your opponent. In this video, I will be going through the settings that I use in FIFA 22. This will include different gameplay settings with gameplay mechanics and also my camera settings. Before I do get into the video, if you enjoy the content here and want to see a bit more from me, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Every single week, I'm up Loading the latest news and the latest tutorials so that you can get the most out of Ultimate Team. If that interests you, then I highly recommend following the channel. If you want to take it a step further, there is a link in the description down below, which will take you over to the second YouTube channel. Over there, I'm not playing through FIFA, but I am playing a variety of different games and streaming them three days per week. The game right now is going through Warzone, so if that does interest you, the link can be found in the description down below. And getting back into the video, when we talk about settings, let's be honest, it's not going to take you from being the worst FIFA player ever to the best with just a few simple changes, but it will make your viewing experience a lot more comfortable and you'll learn about gameplay mechanics that are overpowered and you can use them when coming up to your opponents. So to change your settings, you can go into a match and change it mid game, but the recommendation is just to do it through the menu. If you go to the main FIFA menu, head all the way to customize and there you'll be able to see settings, profile, online settings, playtime, edit teams, create a player and EA Sports tracks. For most of this, it is just down to preference, but for this video, we are solely going to be looking at settings. Here you can customize your controls, game settings, video calibration, basic controls, skill moves, accessibility and select arena player. Starting off under customized controls. This is where you'll be making most of the changes. There are certain settings which are default turned on when you want them off and vice versa. These changes will add and take away different gameplay mechanics that you're able to do within game. And after watching a few other videos around game settings and seeing other people change their settings live on stream, the first thing to say is for a lot of these changes, especially right at the beginning, it doesn't actually matter what you change them to because there is an online preset. A good example of this is the competitive master switch. If you turn this off, you'll be able to change settings such as contextual agile dribbling, auto clearances, auto flare pass, auto shots, assisted headers, jockey, through pass assistance and defending. And some of these settings sound like they'll be great helpers within game, especially if it's a one on one chance where it takes control with an auto shot and puts it in the back of the net. But unfortunately, all of this doesn't really matter. All of these settings here will only have an effect on you if you're playing single player game modes such as career mode. Once you head into online, all of this is set to manual. EA are not going to be assisting you within any of these areas once you get into an online game, especially if this was a setting that you can turn on or off. My recommendation is to select the competitive master switch, turn it to on, and then it'll gray out all of these other options. Next up, we have the FIFA trainer. This one is entirely up to you. Personally, I have it on, but I have it on just time finishing. Back when this was first added, I want to say in FIFA 17, I did have this on all the time. It can help you if you're new to the game and you want to improve your directional passing. We all know FIFA has a mind of its own sometimes where you look to make a pass and that pass may be right in front of you, but in some situations it will go to a completely different player. So by having FIFA trainer on, you can see exactly where you're passing and when you're going to do it. This does help out a lot of players. As said, I have it on, but I have it edited. You can't actually edit it here within these settings, but once you get in game, you will see within the pause menu, it it says FIFA trainer. You click that, go down, you can show or hide this, plus you can also change some of the other settings that are there. So I turn off every setting apart from shooting. This also brings us to our very next setting. This is timed finishing. Now with this year for FIFA 22, I highly recommend having this turned on. In previous years, it really didn't matter. It was actually recommended to have this setting turned off because the overpowered way to shoot wasn't with timed finishing. But this year, goalkeepers are overpowered, especially inside the box. So if you can have time finishing turned on and you can learn to time it correctly, you'll Will be hitting a lot more goals especially once you're inside the box which is a lot harder this year this is also the reason why i have the fifa trainer on which allows me to show the bar once i am trying to time my finish next up we have the next player switch indicator for this i have it off it starts to get a bit confusing for me when looking at the current player selected the second man press indicator and the next player switch icon so i turn this off and leave it to the original player that is selected and the second man press 
After this, we have the pass block assistant. I leave this on. You may find that you want to turn this setting off because a player has just automatically launched over the ball. And if he just stood there, it would have been perfectly fine. He would have actually blocked the shot or intercepted the pass. But if he was to turn this off, it will also stop the players lunging for the balls that they've been easily able to get. And then you'll have situations where the player does just stand there despite the ball rolling just a foot in front of them and them not make an attempt to get the ball. There's been many times when I've been frustrated trying to change this myself and it's always proven to be better to leave this on. Next up, you have auto switching and you have a choice here. You can leave this on air balls and loose balls or just air balls. It can be very infuriating when you're trying to switch the player but the auto switching takes over and it just doesn't give you as much control. You do still want it on air balls because there will be a lot of times especially in corners when you're trying to select to the closest player but because there's so many players within the close proximity that you just can't get the player you want leaving your opponent to be open to a free header with no competition with the auto switch and move assistant i leave this down to none i want to immediately move into position that i want with the player i want and not have it slowly blend in with the current player's movements and animations with clearance assistance, I set this to directional. On the classic clearance assistance, you have no say in direction or power. And there have been players that have complained about this before in previous years, where there's been clearances where the player has automatically booted it into the back of their net. Now, this is a one in a thousand chance of this happening. There's also been complaints of players just booting it out for a corner when they could have just easily left it, or there's even been clearances where they put it right into the opponent's feet, right in front of goal. One of the best things you can do is directional, and even though it still is assisted in some way, you can actually aim of where you want to put the ball. In both cases, is out to a throw-in. It just gives you a bit more control. Next up, we have the player lock. For this, I just leave this on. This just gives you a bit more freedom when using the left and right analogs. Most of you will not be using this, but there's no issue in having this turned on and not using it. It was always there if you need it within game. With icon switching, I have this turned on. Very similar to the player lock, most of you probably have never used this feature, but it is a pretty decent feature to use. It makes things a lot more efficient to the players that are closest to the ball. You can press the right stick in and it will give you a selection of the nearest four players to the ball. You can then select whatever direction you want with your right analog stick and it will select that player. It really helps move players around once you're trying to stop a counter attack. The next setting is right stick switching. This I leave to player relative. With the ground pass assistance, you want this on assisted. If you go and put this onto semi or manual, it just becomes a lot more difficult with the direction and power of the pass. It'll make your attacks a lot slower as you won't be passing directly to the player that you want. It won't be the exact power that you want. So you'll need to run back and track back with that player to retrieve the ball so you can carry on pushing forwards. It's also the exact same with shot assistance as you want this with assisted as well. With a cross assistance, this is where we can take a bit of difference. You either want this on semi or you want it on assisted. The reason that you have a choice here is because once you get down that wing and you are putting it across, there's only really one direction in which you can go. You can have it semi assisted where you're looking for the exact location and direction, but it will assist you with the power. This is not a problem. This can still be used and it can still unlock a lot of chances within game. You just have a bit more control over it. You can then leave the lob pass assistance as assisted. And finally, you have save assistance, which actually doesn't matter when playing ultimate team. This only matters when you go into pro clubs or playing as a goalkeeper within a career mode, in which you still kind of want this as assisted. We move on to analog sprinting. For some of you guys, you may like this. Personally, I have this off. Analog sprinting is where you can use your right stick and depending on how far you push this forward or backwards will depend on how fast that player is sprinting for their max pace. As I want my players to always be on their feet and always be going to their max pace, I turn this off. But if you want a bit more control in how you're dribbling, then you can leave this on as it will decide the pace of the player. With the pass receive lock, I leave this on early. This setting seems to confuse quite a few players, but it's simple once explained. It's based on the direction of your pass after you've pressed the pass button. If you have it on early, the direction of the pass is decided right at the beginning of the animation and you cannot change it unless you cancel with a fake shot. On late, you can press the pass button and whilst the animation is going through, at any point you can change the direction. 
I leave this on early because there's occasions where I've made the initial pass and immediately look to make the second pass with the player receiving the ball. But within this quick movement, sometimes I've been very quick to use my thumbsticks and change the original direction once I've had this on late. And that's actually messed up the first original pass to that second player and messed up the whole attack. So I leave this on early so my initial aim is the one that counts and then I can start thinking about my second pass afterwards. The last thing for these settings is if you're a PlayStation user, you will actually have vibration settings in which you can either have these off or on. Yet again, entirely up to you. Now these are the main gameplay settings. The only other thing that players like to change is their camera. So for this, you need to back out of customized controls and go into game settings and head across to the camera settings. This actually does come down to preference and what you want. I actually switch between two different settings. For the first setting, I set the camera angle to be telebroadcast. I'll then go down to the camera settings for custom, turn that on, and I set the camera height to 20 and the camera zoom to zero. As you can see on screen, this is the way that this camera angle will look. It's not too far away, it's not too close, and I find that I actually defend slightly better when using this. I just find it easier to line up players when going into tackles. The second setting that I go through is a lot further out. This is where I select co-op as my camera angle, turn on camera settings to custom again, set the camera height to 15 and the camera zoom to 5. This camera angle is so much further out that I can actually see the whole pitch from one side to the other. With this one, it's a bit harder for me to defend to actually line up players, but I find it so much easier for me to be able to find players, pass the ball and get into space. And this is actually the setting that I'm rocking right now. Just as a little tip, if you're looking to adjust these settings because the telebroadcast or the co-op camera angle isn't quite what you want and you want to adjust the height or the zoom, don't actually do it here. It's better for you to go into a match. And in this case, I went into Ultimate Team and I selected Squad Battles. I then paused the game and then went down into my camera settings. Now, when I adjust the height and the zoom for the camera, it will show it within the background for the menu. That way I can adjust the settings to the way that suits me. And I don't have to worry about just guessing what the camera angle and the camera height is going to be, only to realize once I go into a game, it's not what I imagined. You can actually make changes and see them in real time and as you're dealing with a single player match in this case it's squad battles you can just pause it whenever you want you don't have to worry about getting disconnected you don't have to worry about there being a timer and the last thing to talk about for this video is the music settings if you're a content creator or looking to produce content within the future you should have music turned off or at least turn the volume all the way down the music that EA offers isn't copyright free, so if you're using that in one of your YouTube videos or one of your Twitch streams, unfortunately, you're going to get a DMCA. This will put a strike on your channel and it will disable you from using certain features overall. Anyway guys, these are the settings that I use in FIFA 22. Some of these are set to the defaults, but others we've had to change and by changing them, you can have a slight edge over your opponents. Whilst going through these settings, I've tried to explain each and every single one of them and explain what they do in game so that if you do not want the things that I want, you can easily adjust them and actually see the difference within game without actually having to guess what it does. If you do have any further questions about anything that we've talked about, then please feel free to leave them in a comment section down below. But anyway, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see ya.